locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Green Bay Packers. With that, let's get up to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Standing by for the call from venerable Lambeau Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Here's the putter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And off we go from Lambeau. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. They'll be led out by the former Cal Bear, Aaron Rodgers. I remember meeting him when he was playing at Cal, and I remember walking away thinking, instead of having Rodgers stitched on the back of his jersey, it should just say confidence, because that's how he felt about his own abilities and his ability to elevate a team. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Quickly now, here's a look at the Green Bay offense. It's tough to be an offensive lineman in Green Bay because their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, knows how to keep plays alive and often extends them for three, four, five, six seconds. But David Bakhtiari, his left tackle, he does it as well as anyone could ever expect. Excellent footwork. Knows that the plays are going to stay alive for a long time. Often we'll get two or three blocks on the same play. Here's second and seven now from the 28. On the delay, Jones. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. And let's go through the starting defense for Indianapolis. Justin Houston is truly one of the elite pass rushers in the league. Knows how to get to the quarterback with a variety of moves. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Working from the gun, Rodgers. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Chester Rogers deep for Indianapolis. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's skill set is absolutely fantastic. There's not anything that he can't do as a quarterback on the field. But I also think that he absorbed a little bit by osmosis. Some of that great bloodline, his father, formerly a quarterback in the NFL as well. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 22. 
Out of the gun. Luck hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. That throw good for four. It's second down. And here are the Colts' offensive starters. Brian Kelly is a great example of how valuable centers have become in the NFL. A former first-round pick, he was plugged in immediately to be a starter to handle big nose tackles as well as blitzing linebackers and also able to move and get out into the run game and get to the second and third level and deliver blocks. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Throwing his line. He's got Jack Doyle, and they're able to get this one across the 35. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Mike Daniels is often underrated as a big-time defensive player in the NFL, but the Packers know his value. Short in stature, but that leverage advantage that he has allows him to get upfield, get underneath offensive blockers, and make plays in the backfield. In addition, very strong at the point of attack. A big time weightlifter, got that from his dad, a former power lifter. Looking to throw on second down. Luck, it's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 14 yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now a play fake, and it's locked. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Pass interference. Defense. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. On first and ten, Locke. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time. But it'll be second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. On second and ten, Locke. This goes to Mack on the check down. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not, and they'll try to convert on third and inches. Throwing again is Locke. And he's got his man, Hilton. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Packers pick it up. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. And he has great speed, defensive back speed. Once he got it and took off, there was no catching. And I know every team tells you to hustle no matter what the play, but there was no chance of catching him. Maybe if it had been a defensive tackle running with the ball, but not in this case.
On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. Two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 26. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Watch a slap. Watch a slap. Watch a slap. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. From the gun, here's Love. Complete to Hilton. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. They'll run on first down. Hines. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Preston Smith there on the stop. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down. It's Hines, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a third down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one.
Throwing on third down. Luck. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Trevor Davis, deep for Green Bay. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little I bit jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their own 24. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Watch out, watch out. Tight end rock, tight end rock. Green again. Rodgers to throw again. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Brings up third and two. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Now it's Rodgers. Looking deep for Adams. Oh, trying to get that to Adams, but that's intercepted. Picked off by Malik Hooker. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Boy, Brandon, that's what I'd call an ill-advised pass right there on third down. I mean, you just need a yard or two to keep the drive going. Instead, he's trying to hit a home run. You've got to really like your chances if you're going to take a shot like that. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? <laughs> turnover, you just noted it Punt's on the first better. drive. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first downs and hopefully points. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. They begin the drive with Hines. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's gonna be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Second and five now. Luck. He's got it to Hilton. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Seven yards there and a first down. First down, Indianapolis. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. This is Hines. And he's taken down inside the 30. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. 
Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first down, Love. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now a give right side. Hines, and not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. Yeah, that was the safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Give me that ball, defense. Give me that ball. Line. Draw play. This is Hines. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. I say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. So with fourth down coming up, here's Adam Vinatieri now for the Colts field goal. This will be kicked from the 42. It's a 52-yard attempt. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Number 12 back out there. Aaron and his Packer teammates set to begin their drive. He'll look to shake off the interception on the opening drive. He should at least be comforted that it resulted in three, not six. And if I were him, I would be the guy all the way out on the field greeting my defense now, saying thanks a lot. He held them to a field goal after I turned it over. That's a big defensive stand for them. He needs to go out now and make up for what he did on the first drive. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. On second down, it's Jones. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he will not get there as they stop him short right around the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. So many things going to making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. The 
This is taken at the 15. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 22. A shotgun snap for Luck. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Nice job, nice patience right there. Put him on the right side, let him work his way across, put the ball in his hands, and let him work his way upfield with a catch. Luck now, 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. Now it's Hines. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And our statistician, Ben Ramsar, just held up three fingers to remind me he now has three tackles for a loss rolling in the first quarter. Well, Ben's got it detailed perfectly. He always gives us the right stats. I'd love to be on the offense's headset right now because what you're hearing is, can someone please block him? Come up with a scheme. Come up with something. Make sure you block him because he's disrupting everything. On second down now. It's Hines, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Doesn't take any great analysis on my part. It's been pretty obvious. Last couple plays, these guys have been going in the wrong direction. Offensive line overwhelmed on those plays. Now, I think it's safe to say going to the air here on third. Back-to-back -back running plays, putting them in negative territory. What can they do coming up on third and 15? Here's Locke. Under pressure, and down he goes. Locke is sacked. Well, certainly some teams are not intimidated by down and distance on defense, are they? Third and very long? <laughs> Let's go get this guy again. Big-time pressure. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Returnable here for Davis. 62 yards on the punt that time. Wow. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their own 21. Now Rodgers, looking deep for Adams, and that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield, but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. From the 21, it's second and 10. Rodgers with a give, it's Aaron Jones. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard and it leads to a third down. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. Go, go, go. 
Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Man open, it's St. Brown, he's got it. And he's got the go. first Here down yardage before being taken go. down at midfield. Give him 30 yards there. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. This is Jones. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day on second down it's jones and he's going to get this one down near the 45 yard line call it a gain of a couple and that's going to leave him with a third and about five I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. Open man is Allison complete, and they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 20-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Run coverage, excellent there from the defensive end position. How many times do we sit with coaches and they talk about a base defensive end, a guy who can anchor and play with leverage? We just saw a great example of it. And how about the bonus, tackling the runner for a loss? Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. I'm going back to you. I'm going back to you. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. To throw on third down, Rodgers. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So on now for the Packers is their all-time leading scorer, Mason Crosby. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. 
This one taken from the seven. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to come from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. The tackle made by Blake Martinez. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down now, it's Hines. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. From the gun on third down, Locke. And he gets it to Funch is complete. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 41-yard line. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now luck. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Zadarius Smith just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Now Luck defers to Mack. Yeah, nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Third and long, it's Luck. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Zadarius Smith, his second sack of the night. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. 
Devontae Adams in the Packer offense heading back out. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers would tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game, though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 22. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Open here is Allison. That's complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 14 yards, good for a Packer first down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They'll run on first down. Jones. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. It's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. After the penalty, it's Jones. A gain of three, second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. On second down, it's Jones. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Tough sequence there for the offensive line. Well, it gives us a chance to shine a little spotlight on the defensive linemen, on the defensive tackles. They don't normally get a bunch of praise, but it all starts there, doesn't it? If you're going to have a good run defense, they have to hold the point of attack and make plays as they just did there. The Packers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Rodgers. And Adams has it, complete. He's gonna go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. And you give him that much time to throw, especially on third down, he's gonna pick you apart. You've gotta increase your urgency. Even if you don't blitz or bring extra people on the pass rush, the guys going after him, they've got to get home. Otherwise, exactly as you described, he picks you apart and picks up yet another first down. So here, the men in charge are going to be looking at whether or not the receiver had possession of the ball as he went out of bounds. And they have to make sure that the receiver got both feet down in bounds as well. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. 
On second down now, it's Jones. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Being strong up the middle is imperative. I don't care what your sport, but in football, when you've got a D tackle who can contribute not only to occupying bodies, but also making plays on the ball carrier, that's when you have the cornerstone of a solid run defense. Watch tight, tight ends right. Watch tight, tight ends right. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. He's going to let it go deep for the end. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Malik Hooker. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. You don't see this often. A quarterback of his caliber, two first-half interceptions. It's absolutely surprising because it happens so rarely. You're searching for what reason, what's going on out there. It's not just maybe the defense is playing well. Is his horoscope off, his biorhythms? What is it? You went horoscope on us, David. Well, I was thinking maybe REM sleep was off. I'm trying to come up with something. <laughs> Anything, right? Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at the 20. After the interception, it's Luck. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for the connection with Devin Funches, but it's going to be second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. We got four. We got five. Throwing his lung. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. The Colts on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, Luck. And the catch made by Hilton. Room here to run. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, defense. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity of the ball game. It's first and 10 at the 14. Luck now to throw. That's complete right around the eight. And he's able to work it here to the eight yard line. A gain of six there on first. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Luck gives this one off to Mack, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. An eight-yard touchdown run, as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. 
So that drive, four plays. And the end result was a Marlon Mack touchdown run. Ten apiece as the kick's away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow... You can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game tied now. So you're not protecting a lead. So you're not playing that way. You've got to go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. Let him go by a little too easily there. Well, that's what we saw in film, isn't it? His head goes down oftentimes when he goes to punch when he's trying to block. And when you do that, you can't see your target. He went right past him and made the play. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Working from the gun, Rodgers. They'll get four out of that, and it'll bring up a third down. It's a game of four. Brings up third and nine. The Packers on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and nine. To throw is Rodgers. He's got Adams on the hookup. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pickup there, 26 yards. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Now a draw play, this is Jones. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run and it's second and four. This drive is turning to an extended one and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Hey, defense, let's go. Pick it up, dude. From the 40 now on second down, Rodgers got a man. That's Allison. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 28. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Quick throw caught out wide by Valdez Scantling. Give him 10 there. Good enough for a Packer first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. On first down, Jones. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. 
and give the tackle to Anthony Walker. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On second down, it's Jones. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. The Packers on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Darius Leonard, the linebacker, able to break that one up. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And Crosby puts it through, and they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, and I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The cold offense and T.Y. Hilton making their way back out, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. Is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. On the delay, here's Hines. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. When you think of Mike Daniels, you think of strength. Hard to knock off the football, but surprising quickness and ability to move and evade people. How about that play there? Well, he can squat 600 pounds, so that's how he caught people's attention coming into the league, and he caught our attention right there. Play action. It's locked. He's got Jack Doyle. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 45-yard line. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. 
They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second and nine, Luck, and this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way, a dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Throwing on third down, Locke. And that will be incomplete. Well, touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Could not have thrown that out there any better. When the ball hit the ground, I thought it might go into the end zone the way it was angling, but perfectly jutting out at the one. You think maybe what we saw in practice came into play there? You know how he put those big cans down on the sideline and then angled for them and, and, and shot for them? Looks like it worked out pretty well for him, too. They'll run on first down. Jones. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Rogers going to throw. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Jones. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Fan 
Lions. A reminder, I have a note card here that says ad lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Oh, hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print, I'm going to read it. I'm Brandon Gaughan. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Rodgers now to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. Now Rodgers throwing again. Out of the backfield, this is Aaron Jones. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That's a game of three. It's third and seven. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. Gets this to his running back, Aaron Jones. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Rodgers now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. And again, it's Rodgers. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Rodgers to throw once more. The connection made. It's Graham. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing and communicating. There he is and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. Throwing is Rodgers. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Rodgers again now. Toward the pylon, caught. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Jimmy Graham in the final seconds of the first half. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. 
Extra point try now for Crosby. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And the result, a Green Bay score. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'd love to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we'll head down to Orlando. That's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this you're is gonna a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. From the 39, 
Luck taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. First down, Mack, and they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Block. This goes out right to Doyle. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Locke. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 34-yard line. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Luck going to bring him up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits... I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Check safety, check safety. On second down now, it's Hines, and he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. From the gun on third down, Locke. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Locke able to find Hilton there for a cold first down. Down it's long. Rodgers brings it in. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Four receivers in the formation here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and three. There's Long. It's caught by Funches. Four yards, the pickup, first down. A gain of four yards, and the Colts, first down. Luck going to bring him up first and ten. And he's up to seven for seven now on this drive alone. They'll fake the handoff. Now Luck. 
Packer pressure, and down he goes. Dean Lowry, it'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. They run the counter. Hines. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. The Packers bringing in an extra member of the secondary here to try for the third down stop. From the gun, here's Love. Funches has it complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And for the second time tonight, his field goal unit comes out here. to the football it's blocked it's picked up a live ball here remember and I think he's gonna go they're not gonna get him he's at the 40 past the 20 and the Packers are in for the score Now Crosby for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown, that field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick, obviously the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Hines. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 
An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. A shotgun snap for Love. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make it second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Back to throw, Lott. Throw complete there, Rodgers. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. Sure, as a coach, when you throw the flag, you hold your breath, then you get the verification you were right, a sigh of relief. Not only a sigh of relief, a little vindication as well, because every time you pull that red flag and throw it, you could be costing your team a timeout. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Now it's locked. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 28. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Throwing on second and eight, Luck. He's got Jack Doyle. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Luck gonna bring him up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. From the red zone now, Locke. Blitz coming and down he goes. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. They'll fake it. Now Locke. That'll be caught by Rodgers. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Ninth 
ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Out of the gun, Luck. And that is incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Adam Vinatieri, the oldest player in the NFL, on for the Colts field goal. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Well, that field goal block pretty much sums up the day for them, doesn't it? Boy, it really does. What's the word we often use? Symptomatic? It's just, it's just been a sign of how this one's gone. Give a lot of credit to the guys who got in and blocked the kick. They've had the advantage all game, and they continue to press it. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. To throw is Rodgers. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. I can't believe they even let you play. To throw is Rodgers. Going to throw again. Pass hauled in by the 6'4 tight end Sternberger. They'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. Third and one, who are you going to call? Not the scat back. You go with the big man, hand him the ball, and let him get upfield and pick up a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Rodgers on target here to Allison. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 13 yards, first down, Packers. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Here's Rodgers to throw. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Geronimo Allison, the intended target. And it's second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. To throw again, Rodgers. And that's complete to Adams. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. 
Here's Jones. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here and maybe want to go pick it up. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, they'll be disappointed with that effort. And the Colts coming out now. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown, that field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick, obviously the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Here's Luff. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there, a 22. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Luck got it complete to Rodgers. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Throwing his lung, and he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first, and it's third down now. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Vinatieri now on to try the field goal for the Colts. He's been blocked twice already. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. 
And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Shotgun now for Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards, first down, Packers. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. Rick. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Now it's Rodgers. Got a man. That's Allison. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Rodgers now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 23 yards, the final tally. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Throwing now is Rodgers. Open here is Allison. That's complete. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. The pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Rodgers to throw once more. And Rodgers is going to go down. He's sacked. The sack by Marcus Hunt. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Margus Hunt, two plays in a row now that he has gotten in there for the sack, and it brings up fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sass. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. 
Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 13. Here's Luck. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Luck. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Zadarius Smith bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Luck in the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. Check back, check back. To throw is long. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Davis now to return it. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Seven yards there and a first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. 318, 50 to Mike, 50 to Mike. No chance. On first down, Rodgers. Flush to his right, and now he's going to use his legs. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. 
looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. This will be caught at about the five. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close. And then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Extra point try now for Crosby. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. Just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. Touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this oh, drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's got to there be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's a handoff to Hines to begin the drive. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Hines. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that anytime you hand the ball to a back. From the 45 on second down. Luck. He's got Jack Doyle. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. On third down, it's Hines. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. 
Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Long. And he gets it to Funches complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. On first down, it's long. He'll try and run it. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Looking to throw again on second down. Luck. Rodgers brings it in. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Face mask. Defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. Now a give right side. Hines down to the six yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Second down, it's Mack, and he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Marlon Mack, his second touchdown of the night, and the Colts are able to cut into this lead. Now he's doing his part, but still facing a sizable deficit. And he would like to do more, but he needs help from the other two-thirds, right? He needs his defense to bow up a little bit, and he also needs special teams to maybe create some big plays and help them get back in it. Benatari connecting on the extra point, and that will shave one more off this lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and the end result was a Marlon Mack touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy, four about in a three, game. Yeah, about the four in a four game. Four times 162. 50 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Randy, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, 
All you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And able to find Graham, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for the green and gold. When we see another great performance like this out of Aaron Rodgers, you have to chuckle thinking that his only FBS offer was a walk-on at Illinois. And now he's the pride of Butte Junior College, of course at Cal. And I remember watching him play at Cal and he would run seven on seven drills. Angry if the ball ever hit the ground and it didn't do it very often. They'll run on first down. Jones. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Brent, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. They'll go again to Jones. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They're going to try the jet sweep on third and long. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. Andrew Luck in the offense. Down by two touchdowns. A minute 50 to play. Field goals useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and here we go again. Here we go again. A shotgun snap for Love. This goes out right to Doyle. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's gonna run off the clock. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. You ain't doing nothing today. <laughs> to throw again on second down. Luck. This to Hines on the drop off. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 19 yards there on the catch and run. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Counting down to 30 seconds remaining. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Right. Hey, 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 hey. 
Throwing again on second down. Luck. He'll find Hines out of the backfield. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Luck throwing again. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete, almost intercepted. He had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. It brings up fourth down. Indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go on fourth. Luck. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Packers D comes up with a big stop. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. So it's all over. A Green Bay victory. And this one boiled down in the end, Charles, to simply too much Aaron Rodgers. We've seen this many times before, haven't we? and I'm sure we'll see it again in the future. Extreme confidence in his abilities, extreme confidence in his teammates, never thinks the game is out of reach because his right arm can equalize anything a defense can put out there. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.